Hey everyone, it's Amanda with Sweet Pieces. Welcome, welcome to our live video today. Um, exciting stuff today, we're gonna be painting tile. So many of you guys always ask about painting tile and um, we thought it'd be a great idea to kind of share how to do this. I'm just, while I wait for you guys to jump on, I'm just gonna get my tripod all set up here. Let's see. Okay. Had a little um, tripod malfunction here just minutes before I jumped on. <laughs> I thought I broke it, but I didn't. It's all good. We're all good. Okay. All right. How's everybody doing today? It's, uh, what's today? It's Wednesday. Wednesday today. It's crazy. I, who else feels like the weeks fly by during quarantine? I don't know if it's... I don't know. I don't know if it's just me or if um, everybody's feeling that way, but it's kind of crazy. I just feel like I wake up and it's it's the end of the week. It's kind of crazy. Um, all right, so we got a bunch of people watching here. My mom's on. Hi, mom. How you doing? How's it going? Um, mom's in Florida. How's Florida? You guys probably have beautiful weather, 80 degrees and sunny. That's what she always tells me. <laughs> All right, so, so this is very exciting. We're gonna be um, painting tile today. So let's say that you have a bathroom or a kitchen or whatever, and you have this terrible tile in there. Hi, Pam, how you doing? Thank you, my team is amazing. I just wanna give my team a shout out before I start. Um, we, they've been cutting and washing fabric for mask making for some uh, one of the local groups that is uh, making masks, the Huntington Mask Mavens. So I was there, I ran to the store today to pick up some supplies and I saw tons of um, fabric cuts. So I, I just thank you so much everybody for pitching in and helping out. I have a very, very fantastic team that I appreciate so, so very much. Um, we have Claudia on, hi Claudia. Julie's here, Linda's here, hello, hello. So good, I love that you guys are watching, it's it's awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting our small business, we really appreciate it. Um, and we love sharing with you guys, we love sharing knowledge, so um, this is always really, this is probably my most favorite part of the business is sharing knowledge. And I don't know how many of you know this, but I went to school to be a math teacher and that didn't work out exactly. I'm sorry if I'm fluffing my hair today, but this, I have the camera flipped so that you guys can see, um, everything the correct way. And it's so funny because I look completely different <laughs> when your face gets flipped around on camera the way that you look at yourself looks different. Did you guys know that? Um, the way that you look at yourself in the mirror isn't the way that people actually see us, which is kind of crazy. But anyway, um, I digress. So we're gonna be painting tile today. So let's say that you have a bathroom and you're gonna be renovating it in a couple of years. But for right now, uh, you just can't stand to look at it anymore. Um, let's say you have one of those old bathrooms that has the color tile or, you know, in my bathroom upstairs, I have like beiges, whereas I've kind of turned everything else to gray. So I'm really ready to kind of redo it. So I actually might be inspired to do this project that I'm about to show you guys in my own bathroom. Shh, don't tell my husband. He'll kill me. <laughs> so basically let's say you have an old junky tile you're ready to to you know change the look up but understand that this is not a forever fix um how long is this going to hold up for it could very well hold up for a long time but it may not so you just kind of have to be aware of what you're walking into before you do a project like this so i have a couple different types of tile here I have a really shiny, smooth tile, okay? So this, really shiny, really smooth. Do you see there's no texture on there whatsoever, okay? Um, this is not a good candidate for painting your tile and getting it to stay looking good for a long period of time. If this were on the wall, I would say it's probably okay. Um, but if it's on the floor, this is the kind of stuff that probably is going to get more wear and tear quicker and ease more easily. Um, a tile that has 
a texture to it. So I don't know. Hopefully you guys can see this on camera. Um, so this, I mean, you can see right off the bat, this tile isn't quite as shiny. It's a little bit more matte. There is a little bit of texture on it. It's not totally smooth and shiny. Okay. Um, and then this is another type of tile that would be a good candidate. And that is um, a natural stone that is more honed. Okay. So like a marble tile. Now I know this is not a tile that you'd want to paint. This is a beautiful tile, but these were just the tiles that I had laying around the house. Um, so anything that's honed and smooth, honed and natural, that's going to take the paint really well. If you have something that's really shiny and really smooth and has no texture to it, it will still take the paint, but it won't hold up quite as nicely. Any tile that has a bit of a texture to it the paint is always going to hold up better on something that has more texture to it so you know if you if you what rub your hand across your tile and you feel a texture that is going to take the paint better than something that's smooth and glossy and shiny so um, i'm going to walk you through a couple of different steps here today i'm going to talk about um, the actual painting process and some different techniques you can do. I'm going to talk to you about how you're going to then top coat uh, your project. And then I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about a new product that we just got into stock, which is the Jolie varnish. And we have it in two sheens, low luster and gloss. So I'm going to show you those. It's the very first time I'm using it. So you guys will kind of get to see my, my process here of going through a new product. And the other thing I'm going to talk to you about is Mother's Day. Mother's Day is coming. Everybody knows that, right? Um, so I'm excited because we have some fun things for you to think about your moms with. Um, we're, we want to kind of take the guesswork. I know it's going to be hard to shop for Mother's Day this year. So we'll make it really easy for you at Sweet Pieces. We'll pack it up for you, put it in a pretty box, and send it off to your mom if that is what you so choose. Or you can just come by and pick it up. Um, okay, so I am going to... Um, I'm just going to flip the camera around here for a second. Okay, we'll flip you around. And then uh, you're going to be looking at my, uh, let's see, what's happening? Rotate, rotate. Okay, there we go. Excellent. Okay, so uh, you're looking at my Mother's Day gift. Do you see that? I am so excited about that bad boy. I'm not allowed to open it yet, but I do know what it is. Um, it is a nail gun. I am. I, I never thought in a million years that I would request a nail gun for Mother's Day. I didn't know how far my DIY love would take me. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm still kind of getting used to all this this tripod stuff since I don't have my camera girl anymore. Well, for now, for the time being, for the short time being. Okay, so let me make sure you guys are all straight here, which I'm using Play-Doh. I don't know if anybody saw the Play-Doh on the floor. <laughs> my tripod is a little bit crooked here, and I thought, what could I use that's really pliable that I could get in here quickly? And you guessed it, Play-Doh. Okay, so... Why is this? Let's flip you guys around here. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do, oh, I am having some difficulties today. <laughs> okay. Let's get these boxes straight. Use my Play-Doh to prop you guys up here and we'll be good to go. So I'm curious, you know, shoot me some, shoot me some questions. If you guys have any questions out there for me, I'm happy to answer them. Love when you guys have questions for me. Uh, okay, here we go. Oh, we do have some questions. I see. Uh, let's see here. Jean wants to paint her eighties kitchen cabinet, kitchen floor tiles. They're eighties ceramic tile. What do I think? So I, I think again, Jean, if they have some sort of texture to them, then you you absolutely can paint them. Um, if they're super, super smooth, that's when you're going to run into trouble, for sure. Um, 
So you want to just kind of keep that in mind. So this is a tile that I painted. I painted this before we came on camera and this is the one that we're actually going to top coat. Now, this is the before of this tile, okay? Um, which this before is not bad. This is a good before. Um, this is actually the tile that's in my basement where we are right now. Um, but it, like I said, it was just a tile that I had around the house. So um, that's what I used. But this is the kind of tile that has, you know, it's got a little bit of texture to it. It's not super, super smooth. So this is a good candidate for it. Um, by the way, I tiled my own floors down here. And I have to tell you, I didn't think that I was a true DIYer until I tiled my own floors. <laughs> Um, let me tell you something. I really, really respect people that do tile. Um, it is bleeping hard work. Let me, let me tell you that. Really, really hard. Um, I wanted to quit halfway through the project. At one point in time, I actually sat on the floor and told my husband that it was not necessary for us to finish, that it was completely fine the way it was, and it just could stay like that forever. <laughs> Because I was just so sick and tired of tiling. So sometimes the projects, um, they try to get the best of you. But don't let it. Don't let it happen. Okay, so somebody else asked, my mom asked, can we paint countertops? You, okay, so here, same answer to, you know, can you paint your tile? You can absolutely paint countertops, but you have to kind of keep in mind that this is not a forever fix. So, if you need something to last you for a couple of years until you get new countertops, then absolutely go for it. If it's something that you think is going to fix it forever, then it's not really the best option. Uh, let's see here. Will this work if the tile is in the shower and exposed to water? Good question. So, you know, if this is like a main bathroom... I probably wouldn't do it. You know, if it's if it's the bathroom that gets you use to shower every single day and you're going to scrub that tile down, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. But if it's um, a guest bathroom and it gets used three times a year, um, you know, I might. I might do it if I need it to last for a season or so. Um, I tell you guys all the time what I tell my clients to do and what I do in my own home are two different things. So, you know, would I do it in my own bathroom if I needed it to look good for a party or two for the holidays? You betcha. Um, but I would not use it as a long-term solution. All right, let's see. I think we have, um, so she also asked, what do you do about the grout? Does the paint, yeah, the, the grout will definitely uh, cover with the paint. You can choose to do your grout lines in a little bit of a different color if you want to even give it um, some more designer flair and contrast. So that is um, an option. And sh she also asked, or is there a grout stain to apply? There might be. I'm not really sure. I haven't um, delved very deep into that, Mary, but you could, you could definitely Google that and find out. Um, but you can definitely use the paint on the grout. So Lori has two tiles on the bathroom wall where cup holders were removed. Um, I'm just going to move this over because I can't read. Okay, were removed. Small holes were caulked. Any suggestions how to hide with paint? Small holes were caulked. Um, I mean, you could do... So just to give you a peek here, this um, tile looked like this before I painted it. And... Um, I actually just, I printed out a vinyl um, and I put it on here. I stenciled it. You could maybe do something like this, apply some sort of a stencil to that um, area just to kind of hide it a little bit, but you could definitely use the paint to hide it. Um, the paint actually hides a plethora of sins. It's quite amazing. So I'm going to show you basically how I painted this tile. So I'm going to paint... Um, this tile first. So let me just swap these out here. So you're looking at the same thing. And I used a combination of, I used palace white first. Let me grab a stir stick. 
And then what I did on here was a blending technique. So you always want to make sure you stir, you stir your paint before you start. Okay, that's really important. And sometimes your paint, and this goes for your varnish as well, your top coat, you might be a little bit thick at the bottom. And that's okay. That doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with your paint. Um, you just want to make sure that you get it mixed all in nice and good if you do find that um, you have some thickness at the bottom. So I'm just going to go ahead and dip my brush into the paint with the white. Oh, and you know what? I just realized I started with gray, but that's okay. I'll show you guys how I did this. So I'm just kind of painting this on. Now, the way that I would paint tile is I would paint it very textured like this, okay? I wouldn't be painting it all smooth. And I might, I probably would do this in thin coats, um, do like two or three thin coats, but because I just wanna show you guys how I get coverage on this, I'm just gonna do this a little bit thicker. Oh, blooper reel. <laughs> I didn't realize that was open, but that's okay. Okay, so the next thing, and I just ruined the beautiful sample that I made for you guys, but it's okay. See, this is real life here. Okay, so the next thing I need is my gray. So what I'm using here, again, on my sample, I used um, French gray, but I'm just grabbing linen right now because I think my French gray is upstairs. But that's okay. Grab another stir stick. Good thing I have all my supplies down here. It makes it nice and easy. Okay, so basically this is, um, I call this a color blending technique. So I'm gonna just dip my brush into the paint. I just have a little bit on the brush, not a whole ton. And I'm just going to kind of blend this in with the paint. So I'm doing this while this is wet. Now this is just a technique. You could paint your tile one solid color if you wanted to. Um, and that would be totally, totally fine. But I'm just kind of showing you a little bit of a technique that you could do. So now I have my two colors that are a little bit blended together. And the other thing about tile is that a lot of times, you know, like this countertop here, it's it's not just one solid color. It has some variation to it, some texture. So you kind of want to replicate that when you're painting the tile so that it kind of looks authentic. And who doesn't want to make their ugly 60s tile look like, you know, marble or granite? So now I just have um, just a regular old sponge and I'm just gonna kind of blot this and move it around. I might bring my brush back in and brush it a little bit and blot and brush. I might add a little bit of gray. And then I always, I always love like three colors together. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll do my two, it's kind of like a, a light tone, a medium tone, and then a dark tone. And so my third color here is going to be the graphite. So I'm just going to pop open, I'm sorry, I'm using Noir. So I'm just going to pop open my piano graphite. And I know I have only just, I'm sorry, Noir, I keep saying graphite. Um, I have just a tiny little bit left in here, but I only need a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of blot this on here. And then I'm just going to use this other brush to just kind of blend. And again, you know, I'm, I've become comfortable with being a little uncomfortable you know, I, no one trained me how to do videos. No one trained me how to paint. Um, I just do it, even if it's scary and I'm going to make mistakes and it's okay. That's, you know, that's kind of how you learn. So um, I always tell people when they're getting ready to tackle a paint project and they say they're scared to do it, I just say, 
just just do it. You can't, you got to feel the fear and do it anyway. One of my favorite books of all times, by the way. Um, and I, I always say that when you don't like it, if you don't like how your project is coming out, it just means you're not finished. So it just means keep going. And that's, you know, that's what I do most of the times. Um, I'm always not, I'm not really always sure exactly how things are going to come out, but I know that if I just work at it and I keep trying, it's, it's, it's going to be fine. And that's what I love about these products is that you really can't make a mistake with them. Um, you can always just go over it with another color. You can blend another color into it. You can try another technique. It's really, really very easy to transform something. So I'm just going to leave this be. This is you know, kind of fun. I have my three colors here. I kind of feel like I want to see a little bit more white. So maybe I will jump back in with a little bit of white here. And, you know, again, once you, you could test this, I would test this out on a, on a couple of samples. Um, once you figure out, oh yeah, okay. I like this, these three steps worked for me or these three colors worked for me. Once you do that, then you can kind of take that and just replicate it to the rest of the kitchen or bathroom or whatever. Um, for me in my bathroom upstairs, my little bath, my um, master bathroom, which is little, it, pro it, you know, I don't know, is there maybe 10 or 12 tiles in there that are 12 by 12? So I, I really don't think this would take me very long. And if I decided to do that stencil that I showed you on the tile that I did last night, um, it really wouldn't take me very long at all once I figured out like exactly what kind of a technique that I wanted to do. So this kind of technique that I'm doing with the stippling, this is also creating a little bit of texture on the piece. So that's also a good thing when it comes to this because it's gonna just kind of help with the, um, the grip of the paint onto the surface. This is also, you can do this technique on um, furniture as well. And this comes out really, really beautiful when you do it on furniture also. So there is a, a really simple, you know, color blending painting technique. This could be construed as uh, some sort of a stone. You could even take a little, let me grab a little brush here. I'm gonna put a little water on it. Take a little brush. I could dip this into my white paint here. And I could do uh, some marbling techniques on here. And I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys and tell you that this is the very first time I've ever done this. <laughs> so when I tell you that it's okay to not know what you're doing and just have fun with it, I'm speaking from complete and personal experience. Um, so how would I do this if I really wanted to get this right? I would probably have a piece of marble in front of me and um, I just so happen to have a piece of marble in front of me. Um, I would, you know, just kind of take that. Let me roll this down here a little bit. Okay. Um, I would take that piece of marble here, look at this, and I would just kind of try to replicate it. You know, I'm looking at the way that the veins look in there and um, just take my, my brush and kind of roll it in. So lots of different things that you can do to make your tile look really, really awesome. So that kind of gives you a little key into that. Okay, so once you have, um, you decide on what you want to do for your actual pattern your actual layout on your tile and it dries and everything then you're going to go ahead and seal it let me just pop up here and make sure I don't have any other questions uh let's see here <laughs> so Jean this is Jolie chalk style paint that I'm using here um our favorite Jolie chalk style paint um, available right on our website. If you just uh, go to the website, sweetpieces.com, click on paint, and you'll see Jolie paint there. So I would not use the General Finishes product for this. Um, maybe it's been done, but I have a lot more experience using the Jolie, and I find that it works really, really well. So Allison's asking, can we do this on a bathroom floor that has moderate traffic? Yeah, 
I would say that you can. We actually did our uh, back vestibule at the store and um, it's concrete, but it, it it has held up really, really beautifully. So you can absolutely do this on the floor. I just want to point this out. This was my little boo-boo that I spilled my paint on right, right as we were on camera here. <laughs> So that would not be how I would do, how I would, um, you know, seal this up, but I'm going to show you guys anyway. And you know, like this is real life. So how would I fix this? If I actually did this in real life, I'd probably just take my paintbrush and just try to cover this up. I'd probably get like a little bit of water on here if I really wanted to get crazy and just kind of you know, I might even say, oh my gosh, you know what? I'm just going to distress this whole thing and make it look like I meant to do that. I could do that too. You got to just like go with it. That's, isn't that life? You can't, you know, God has different plans for us than what we lay out sometimes. So you got to just, you got to learn to go with it. Because we can, we can plan all we want, but if the man upstairs says it's different, then it's going to be different. <laughs> and you got to just go with it. So you could, you know, I could take like a sponge here and I could, let's see, what color would I want to do here? I could do my gray. Let's see. I'm going to make you guys really scared. See, this is how I do projects. It's just kind of like whatever comes into my head. Let me get a little bit of water. And if you see, have you guys seen these tiles that look like this? Um, I love them. I actually, I really want to do it in my uh, bathroom, in my bedroom. Um, like the black and white and they have the ones that are like beige and they look so pretty. So I would definitely do something like this. And now I'm thinking I might just try it on the floor because it is it is a tiny little bathroom. So, you know, if I really screwed it up, I might do something like that. You could layer over it. So you have lots of options. I would have covered this up better, but I just, I don't have this color in front of me. So it's all good. We're improvising. Okay. So I'm just going to jump in here. I'm going to just see what other questions I've, I have. So Lori's asking, if I can color match, do you sell small cans for touch up purpose? We do. Yeah. Um, we sell four ounce containers. So we have, these are our four ounce jars. They're not usually dripping with paint. <laughs> um, Deep Lagoon is the name of this one. A really, really pretty, uh, like rich teal blue. So yeah, you can, you can use those for touch up. And Kelly's asking, she's redoing her camper and there's vinyl in the mail area and carpet. And there is vinyl. Do you think I could paint that? Yes, I do. Yes, I do, Kelly. Um, there are not very many materials that we have found that we cannot paint with Jolie chalk, chalk style paint. So you absolutely can uh, cover it. You know, we've done linoleum, we've done tile, we've done cement, we've done wood, we've done brick. Um, which, speaking of brick, I think we're going to be doing that next week, showing you guys. So I just want to show you really quickly, this is the varnish, this is the floor varnish. And basically... Um, this is meant for floors, okay? So we have a couple of different types of varnish available now. We have a furniture varnish that you can use um, on your furniture instead of wax. And we also have this floor varnish. So the floor varnish is a satin sheen. Um, and I do wanna warn you that the floor varnish tends to be a little bit thick on the bottom. So do you see this thickness that's on here, okay? Um, that is completely normal. So as these cans sit, they tend to get, you know, all of the, um, the agents kind of clump up at the bottom and they can get a little bit lumpy. So the key is to just kind of scrape the bottom of the can and you want to just kind of keep pulling that stir stick up to mix everything in. And then I'll even, you know, kind of scrape it off on the side and let that get mixed back in. You, you want to make sure you let that all get mixed in. You don't want to like lose any of that 
chunkiness. You wouldn't want to like pull it out and scrape it off into a can somewhere else. So you just want to make sure. Um, I, I mean, I've had some really lumpy cans and they will flatten out if you just, you know, give them a good amount of time to stir. So just be patient, stir it up. It will get unclumped and you'll be good to go. So full disclosure here, this is a can that we had in the store. We actually mixed a little bit of a white colorant into it so that uh, when we sealed our white floors, uh, it just, we use a stain blocker first, but we also wanted to ensure that we weren't going to have any bleed through. So we also put a little bit of white colorant into the top coat, which you could also do. So I'm actually going to use a top coat brush to apply the floor varnish. Normally, if you were actually doing a floor, um, you would want to use a roller to apply this. And the key with this, and I just realized oh, it's pretty dry. Um, the key with this is you want to apply it in very, very thin coats. So you can kind of see this has like a whitish hue to it. And that's because we added that white colorant to it. So yeah, the key like I said, is just making sure that you apply it very, very thinly. Um, and uh, in one direction. And when you do your second coat, which I would always recommend a second coat, you're going to do your second coat in the opposite direction. So when I'm ready to do this second coat, I would be going this way on the actual tile, okay? So you wanna make sure that basically your um, patterns are like cross hatched and what that's going to do is it's it's going to make your um, the finish a lot more durable for you so basically that's it it's easy peasy to use the product like I said you want to make sure that you start really really well um, and that is also going to help you to get a consistent sheen throughout your actual project so that's really really important I'm actually going to um, swap out this tile here for um, a sample that I did the other day. I actually did this on camera with you guys as well. So this was a sample that we did during our glaze series. And this was the Jolie chalk style paint. And we did um, a base coat of linen. And then we did uh, a wash of the Noir on top of this. So now this is, it's totally dry, obviously. It was dried days ago. And I'm going to use the Jolie varnish on this. So this is, um, dun, 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 this is the very first time I'm using the Jolie varnish. This is brand new, it just came out. We just got it delivered the other day. And um, I'm pretty excited about it. So this is gonna be for furniture. So I'm just going to pop open this can here. It comes in two sheens, low luster and gloss. So you can see, let me pull this over here. You can kind of see how it's like a little bit separated. And that is going to be totally normal for any of the products um, that come from us. Um, I was talking, I ha we have a new product that we're going to be bringing in. I can't tell you what it is yet. I'm so excited. Um, but I was speaking with her and, and she was saying how, you know, they don't use any kind of preservatives to suspend all of the materials and that helps to maintain um, a quality product. So, you know, I am going to see some separation as it sits on the shelf. So, um, and that's the way that it is with most of our products. So you just want to make sure that you're always stirring your cans really, really well. And you you also want to make sure that you read your can because some things can be stirred and some things um, can be shaken. So like for instance, the high performance top coat from General Finishes, you don't want to shake that because it's actually going to cause bubbles. I think the varnish is the same way. So um, you do want to be mindful of how you treat your products. Now, the Jolie Matte Finish Paint, shake away. Shake it up. Same thing with milk paint. You don't want to shake the milk paint either, the General Finishes milk paint. So now, I mean, you guys saw how that was like pretty lumpy and clumpy and it had weird coloring throughout. Um, now it's nice and 
smooth and consistent, which is what we want. So just take a minute or two before you start your project to make sure that you're doing your due diligence and stirring away. Let me just take a look and see if I have any other questions. How can I do, how can you do a glossy tile? Allison is asking. So Allison, you would do a glossy tile exactly the same way that I showed you. Just basically clean it and apply a paint. But you just want to understand that a glossy tile, if it's being walked on, it's not going to hold up quite as well as a tile that has some texture to it. Now, if it's a tile that's on the wall and it's not really going to get touched, then you should be okay, basically. Um, I'm just going to rinse my brush really quick. So I just rinsed the um, floor varnish out of my top coat brush so I can switch over to the other varnish. Uh, so Mary is asking, what do I seal it with? So the floors, you're going to seal with the floor varnish. Uh, furniture, you're either going to seal with wax uh, or you're going to seal with the varnish, just the regular furniture varnish, which is this new product that I'm testing out for the first time. Um, I'm just putting a little bit onto my brush. I don't have a whole ton on there. And now I'm just going to brush. And, you know, what you want to... What you want to think about whenever you're applying top coat, um, you want to go in one direction. You want to put it on consistently in the sense that it needs to be a similar thickness throughout. Um, so that was, you know, fairly simple. And I could just see by tilting my board here that I got it on pretty much everything. I'm going to rinse this one more time. So if you're looking for any of these products, um, the way that I'm referring to them is exactly how they are named on the website. So this brush right here is called Top Coat Brush on the website. Um, so you'll just wanna, you could just search for that right in the search bar and it, will, it should come up. I don't know if you guys know, but we're also doing virtual consultations. So if you have specific questions about projects, you can, there's a form right on our website. You can fill it out, put in your name, your phone number, your email. You can upload photos of your project. And you can also upload photos of how you want your pieces to look. And then we will get back to you with a customized listing of exactly what products to use what order to put them on in. We'll link uh, videos for you for any specific techniques that we talk to you about. Um, and then there's links to all of the individual products that you need, and then you can choose to purchase whatever you want to purchase. We're running free shipping on our website on any orders that are $50 or over for DIY products. And we're also doing free curbside pickup every day between, um, not every day, but uh, between Tuesdays and Saturdays. So feel free to stop on by if you need any help. And also, just so you guys know, I'm going to actually flip up the camera here. Um, we're also doing uh, donations for, uh, let's see here. Hold on one second. There we go. So we are donating $5 for every can of paint that we sell. And we're also donating 10% uh, of all of our home decor purchases. So, um, you know, we, I just couldn't mindfully just do business with everything that was going on and not help in some sort of way. So um, just know that your purchases are not only supporting a small business and keeping people employed, uh, but you're also helping a really fantastic cause. So um, it's good stuff all around, which is what we love. Okay, so I think I have a couple more. Um, Aaron, Aaron loves the Jolie. I know it's a fantastic product, so easy to use. Yes, or I could, well, I could have washed blue all over the whole tile, Jill. You're right, that's the route I should have gone. What was I thinking? <laughs> yeah, so I always say just go with it. That is, you know, you gotta just, you gotta like roll with the punches. Um, 
I am a self-proclaimed control freak. And uh, that is very hard for me to do sometimes, but I do need to constantly remind myself, you know, you gotta just go with it. Like there are bigger plans at work sometimes, and it usually turns out better than how you thought it was gonna be if, um, when you do just kind of go with it. So Kelly had a vision for her camper. Um, she redid the table and the day bed. They didn't work out expected. Oh, it didn't work out. But you know what? That's okay because I'm sure that Kelly's going to put an awesome something or other into its place. So it's um, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. It always turns out exactly the way it was supposed to. So Carrie is thinking about doing her kitchen backsplash. And she's asking if there's any kind of issue with um, heat behind the stove or moisture behind the sink. So there's not any issue as far as it's gonna catch on fire. Um, could it potentially wear away in those areas faster because of the heat and the moisture? Sure, it could. Um, but you know, the beauty of it is that you can touch it up. So, you know, sometimes we have clients that come to the store and they say, somebody did my peas for me, um, now it's chipping, you know, can you match it? And we usually can, we have, we'll figure it out, but, you know, had they done it themselves and they have those, whenever we do custom projects, we always give the clients a touch-up kit so that they can, you know, make any touch-ups that they need to if, you know, God forbid they get any kind of, you know, scuff scratches, you know, dings and things like that. So um, when you do it yourself, you will have those products on hand and it's so easy to touch it up. So it's not, you don't have to make a big process out of it, which is really, really nice. So Mary's asking... Um, she's curious if we'll be doing a mortar wash, but with chalk paint when, okay. So I haven't figured out exactly how we're going to do the brick yet because I don't have like a full big piece of brick. If anyone wants to drop one off at my house, I will be happy to do it. I have some standalone bricks in my backyard, but I need something like with mortar in it, which I don't have on hand at the moment. Although I'm, Con I've been contemplating doing my brick patio in a whitewash. Um, it's like a beautiful old red brick. It's really worn, but I just feel like it would be so beautiful it had, if it had a whitewash on it. So if I do decide to jump into that project, that would be a pretty big project. Um, I will definitely, definitely do a video on that for sure. Uh, let's see, do we have, so Pam is asking, will we cross hatch the furniture varnish as we do with the floor varnish? So that's a great question, Pam. Let's go to the can. <laughs> um, I haven't actually read the directions yet. Okay. So this product is non-yellowing. Okay. So I want to explain what that means because it doesn't always mean what you think it means. But before I do that, let me just, um, Take a look here at what this says before we begin. Okay, so it says you can actually shake this product lightly and then you wanna open it and stir it well before use. Um, this product should always be used at full strength. You're not gonna dilute it. So with the floor varnish, you can actually dilute it 10% on your first coat and then um, your second coat you can do at full strength. Um, apply two to three coats of Jolie varnish with a synthetic brush. Uh, so synthetic, a synthetic brush is different from your regular Jolie brushes. So here is like your regular Jolie brush. A synthetic brush is like what I was using here with the top coat brush. So, um, I'm just trying to see how I can show you guys this. So the, these are natural bristles. Do you see how those, all the bristles are kind of a little bit different? Um, natural bristles. They have like this natural color to them. These, I don't know if you could tell, but it's just much smoother. This brush is much smoother. So synthetic bristles are always better for your, the top coats that you want to put on smoothly. Um, okay. You can also use a sprayer with the Jolie varnish. And it doesn't actually say that you need to cross hatch it. So I think that's more so for floors because the piece is being walked on um, that you want to do that cross hatching. But I think on furniture, it's totally fine to just go in the same direction. Okay. 
do we need yes so linda you do need two coats of varnish on furniture that's going to give you the most durable finish um two to three coats you can actually do so on like a dining table or a kitchen cabinets you might want to think about doing three coats so and then patty's asking what sheens are available it comes in low luster and gloss and John is asking, do we need to scrape the bottom of the can like floor varnish to activate the flattening agents? Yes, you do. So you do want to make sure, like I said, that you're mixing everything really, really well whenever um, you're using any of those products. So let me go back to non-yellowing and what that means. So the product itself, the varnish, and this is true for our high performance top coat as well, are both non-yellowing so that means that over time with sun whatever it's not going to yellow that actual clear coat that's on top however if you are using varnish or top coat or polyurethane or any of those products over a white paint you are almost always guaranteed to get yellowing it is not the the top coat product that is producing that yellowing effect, it's actually the substrate underneath. So it's whatever you started with. So let's say that you started with a mahogany dresser and you painted it white and now you've put a top coat on top of it. That top coat penetrates through your paint and it goes into the mahogany. It activates whatever's in it, dyes, tannins, stains, and it pulls it up through the wood and through the top coat. And then you can get streaking, you know, pink veining. You can get lines of yellow or gray or, you know, it, it, you'll know, trust me, when it happens. So with any time you're using a white paint, there we have two recommendations. Either you seal it with wax because wax isn't the same type of a penetrating top coat that a polyurethane or a varnish would be where it's soaking into the paint and pulling up from underneath it's it's almost melding with the paint and sitting on top of it so waxing isn't going to cause your paint to um, yellow or pull stains through so that's one way you can uh, approach your furniture that you're painting white the other way is that we recommend using um, a stain blocking primer or shellac. So we recommended shellac for many years and shellac is a fantastic product to use. However, shellac has a shelf life of about six months. So we always say we love to be a one-stop shop for you at Sweet Pieces. And um, we just didn't sell enough shellac to be able to keep it in stock and reorder it every six months. Um, so we, uh, that is something you can use. You can find it at most any local hardware store, although you want to make sure it's not an expired can. So you'll want to look on the top of the can, um, for the date code. So the other thing that we have found, which actually works way better than even shellac is the general finishes stain blocking primer. So that is a product that we carry in the store. It's on the website. Just search for it. Stain blocking primer. Um, it is by far hands down the best stain blocking primer on the market, period. It will beat out every other stain blocking primer out there. Um, I've ranted and raved about how awesome General Finishes is for a long time, but I'll quickly say this again. Um, General Finishes develops and manufactures all of their products right in Wisconsin. So the same place where they are housed, the people that answer the phone and troubleshoot, and answer the phone when we want to place an order are the same people that actually develop the products and manufacture them out back. I visited their plant. Uh, you could literally eat lunch off of the floor. I've never seen such a, such a clean manufacturing facility in all of my life, um, but everything gets developed there. So because they are a boutique manufacturer and they have uh, like in the manufacturing world, a small business, um, they can implement new products a lot quicker and easier than a lot of the big boys can. So for instance, if you think about Sherwin-Williams, if a chemical company came to them and said, we have this new resin that we want you guys to develop for a new product, 
it's going to take Sherman Williams years to develop something like that because of everything that has to go on, as opposed to a company like General Finishes that has um, a lot less red tape to go through. Um, they can implement those products a lot quicker and, and faster. So um, that is what the, the General Finishes stain blocking primer uh, is made from, is, is a new resin system that is proprietary and amazing and like i said it will beat out any stain blocking primer that's out on the market so if you're doing white and you want to top coat it you should use the stain blocking primer first then paint then seal with your top coat you didn't miss me grandma i'm still here <laughs> um so I think I have ranted and raved enough about General Finishes and their awesome products. But, um, and Jolie, I mean, I, I'm so thankful that we found these amazing products so that we could um, show them to everybody, which is awesome. So before I go, I want to show you um, some of the things. And if you're on our email list, then you probably got notification of this, but um we have some pretty awesome stuff available for you guys if you need to be saved for Mother's Day, okay? So um, we have, uh, for your DIY mom, we have our, our oversized sign kits. So uh, again, just look on the website, DIY kits. That's what you're gonna search for. Um, you can come and pick one of these up. You can either make it or you can give it to your mom as something that she can make. Um, so this is a really, really great gift. We also have, as you guys know, um, tons of DIY products. So if your mom is a DIYer, um, if your mom is a DIYer, then you could definitely get her some of our awesome DIY products. And the other thing is that we're also offering gift cards on the website. So if you don't know what your mom would want for Mother's Day, then you can just get her a gift card, which she could use for anything in the store, which is fantastic. Um, we also have tons of home decor on the website. So if you um, want to get some free flowers, these are, I love these. These are so free. Um, these are faux tulips, but let me, they're, they're so realistic. They really, really do look so, so, so very real. They're almost like a, a foam petal, which I absolutely love. So all of the faux florals on the site, and we have a ton of them because I'm slightly obsessed with florals, um, are very, very realistic. So if I have put it in the store, I can promise you it is realistic and you will love it. And, you know, things like this. I mean, this, this is just so pretty. This is one of my favorite things. And I actually brought it home and it's been sitting on my table and I think I might have to buy it. Um, it is this beautiful glass urn. If someone buys it off of the website, I might give it to you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We have more in the store. So this is like all of the decor in the store is really, really beautiful. And like I said, it goes through me. It has to go through me before it gets put in the store. We also have a plethora of candles. That's another fun thing that um, moms always love candles. But these candles, these are called Milk Reclamation Barn candles. They are, the scents are amazing. They, it's you know, sometimes a candle, you, you light it and it doesn't smell. It, it, it just doesn't permeate through the house. These permeate and they stay smelly for a really long time. And the, the fragrances, the scents are really, really nice. They're not like those obnoxious florally smells. They're really, really pretty. So this one, this is one of my favorites. It's called Suck It Up Buttercup. And this is the warm aroma of bourbon butter brickle. It is so delicious, yum, yum, yum. So we have a ton of these on the website. There is not one of them does, that does not smell heavenly. So don't be afraid to purchase one um, without being able to smell it. I promise I've done the smell test for you. You'll be a-okay. Um, this is another thing that has been a huge hit at the store. People are loving these and we love them. I mean, we, we, we found them a couple months ago and we're, we're pretty much obsessed. So these are called jelly bags and they come in a bunch of different styles and a bunch of different colors as well. Um, this is made from recyclable material and they are also recyclable, um, but they're so cute and they're great for the beach. 
They're great for toting around DIY supplies. I mean, look at this. They hold the paint can so perfectly. We didn't know this when we ordered them, but um, like how cute would this be as a little Mother's Day gift? To throw in a can of paint, throw in a can of wax, um, throw in a couple of brushes, a couple of stir sticks. I mean, what a cute little gift. So if you want us to do something like this for you, um, we can absolutely put it together for you. Um, and you know, we can wrap it all up and make it look all pretty and ship it right to your mom. So if you wanted to do that, you would just need, need to leave us a note at checkout. Um, and we will take care of that for you. We'll get in touch with you and make sure that we do it up all nice for you. But these are super cute. They come in, like I said, a bunch of different styles and love this one. This is so cute. It, this handle at the top, it actually like clips together. And then when you're ready to open it, it pops open. So this clips together and you can carry it. And I'm just, I'm just, I can't wait. I'm, I'm hoping and praying that Governor Cuomo opens the beaches this, this summer because I, this is my beach bag. This is going to be what I hold Madison's toys in and our towels and, and all that good stuff. So I'm excited for that. And then this, this is super cute. This is a really cute, it's a crossbody. It's a crossbody. So this pops open and it has a little strap in here. How cute is that? They're just, I just love them. I just think they're so cute. So they come in, like I said, a bunch of different styles and you can just search jelly bags, J-E-L-L-Y on our website and um, you'll find them. I'm just trying to make this smaller. So yeah, for sure, definitely take a peek. Uh, let's see, we have a couple questions here. By the way, these little ones, um, I thought were just really cute for the kids. So Madison has one, she's got one in hot pink. Um, really, really cute. So let's see, somebody had a question. Uh, let's see. You're welcome, Ka Karen, thank you. Uh, you guys are so complimentary, I really appreciate it. Um, Jill asked if we were still offering the gift card bonus the gift card bonus cards to use in May. Yes, we are, Jill. So if you go onto the website and you take a peek at the gift cards, um, there if you purchase them, there's actually a bonus. So you get, I think it's like if you buy a $50 gift card, you get a $5 gift card for free or a $10 gift card. I, I can't remember the amounts, but it's on the website. If you just look at it, it will show you. Um, so here's my little crossbody. How cute is this? And by the way, these weigh like nothing. So sometimes with bags, if you stuff it full of stuff, that's bad enough. It weighs a ton, but some of the bags are really heavy just on their own. Like um, I have a few Michael Kors bags, which I absolutely love, but they're really heavy. That lock is like legit and it makes it really heavy. So <laughs> um, these are nice because they're just, they're lightweight in themselves. The other thing too, um, you know, we have some really cute, like tote bags, canvas bags. Um, there's all kinds of fun stuff on the website, decor products. Um, they've all been sourced by us and tested. Like I said, we love, love, love every single product that we bring into the store. It's something that we've used. Um, most of the time it's in our homes. Um, we go shopping first. <laughs> so you can trust that the product that you're getting is a quality product and we will also be able to help you if you have questions about anything, um, you know, concerning our DIY products. We're here, we're here to help you. So let's see. Oh, Jill, that's a good idea. The je large jelly bag for, for produce. And then she can go home and disinfect them. Love it. That's a really great idea. Um, so I want to remind you guys before we go, we are going live again tomorrow at 12 o'clock at the shop, we're doing another shop tour. So tomorrow is gonna be a little bit different. I'm still gonna walk through the whole space, but I'm, before I go, I'm actually gonna pull out a bunch of products um, that I absolutely love, and I'm gonna kind of focus on some of that stuff. And uh, we will be available at the shop. If you need to purchase anything while we're on video, you can shoot us a message, screenshot what you like, um, give us a call on the phone. We'll be available for any anything that you guys need. And like I said, we are available from Tuesdays to Saturdays for curbside pickup. Um, you can shop online anytime at sweetpieces.com. 
of course, you know, S-U-I-T-E. And, um, and that's that. So today's Wednesday, tomorrow's Thursday. We normally do videos on Fridays, but I have some appointments um, on Fridays. So just make sure you tune in tomorrow at 12 o'clock for our third shop tour. It's exciting. Um, I hope you guys are hanging in there. Remember, you got to stay healthy. You got to stay positive. You got to move your body. Who's doing yoga? Is anyone doing yoga with me? I I'm on like five weeks straight here. And I have to tell you, I feel so good. My body is, I feel so good. I'm actually starting to feel stronger. Like, you know, when you start a workout regimen and you feel like, like an awkward fish <laughs> and you're not doing the moves correctly and everything just feels not right. I'm actually starting to feel like the moves are, you know, they're working with me now. So, um, Ooh, Tracy's doing bar. I love it. What bar are you doing, Tracy? So yesterday, um, I tried a 10 minute bar workout in the beach body line. Um, so it's a brand new program that they just released and I was really excited to try it and I just haven't had a minute. So yesterday I had, oh, you're doing, you're doing the, 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 um, what is it called? Bar, uh, bar blend. Yeah. So anyway, I, I did a 10 minute workout, Tracy. I was, I, I couldn't believe it. I was so sweaty. <laughs> My butt hurt so bad. <laughs> it was awesome. So between the bar and the yoga, I am going to be looking super fly in my bikini this summer on the beaches, Mr. Cuomo. <laughs> we are opening those beaches. I'm prophesying it. <laughs> so Tracy's on round two. You were in on it early. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. So get your body moving, whether it's you're outside walking the dogs, playing with the kids, um, you know, do some sort of, I'm telling you, I'm in love with yoga. It's centering my mind. It's centering my body. Um, it's really, really helpful. Make sure that you're eating somewhat healthy. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I've been baking. I did bake cookies this weekend with Madison. We had a lot of fun. We did cupcakes a couple weeks ago, but I'm also trying to, um, eat healthy too. You know, eat like, do I want the cupcake or do I want a piece of fruit, like a pear? So, you know, try to make those healthy choices at least part of the time that will, that will at least get you going. Um, turn the news off. That's another tip I have for you. Turn off the news. Um, stop watching it. It can be so depressing, so depressing and so anxiety inducing. Um, we will know what we need to know. I mean, we, we live in a society of instant notification. So if the world is ending, we're going to, we're going to find out about it. I, we don't need to sit and be glued to the, to the news stations all day. Um, so watch something positive. Watch, you know, watch something that keeps you motivated. Um, learn something new. I mean, we are in the day of internet, anything, anything that we want to learn, we just Google it and you can learn how to do it. So take this opportunity that you might be home, you might be bored, um, you might not have a lot to do to learn something new and, and tackle something in your home that you've been wanting to do, which is like what I think a lot of our customers are doing. And we so appreciate it. We so appreciate your business. Um, we love serving you. We love answering your questions. So um, keep, keep them coming. Keep the questions coming. We're here for you. Um, and I hope you guys have a really, really fantastic Wednesday and I will see you tomorrow at 12 o'clock. I can't wait. Thanks guys. Thanks for watching. Want to learn more? Subscribe now.